Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes. UBS is calling time on Indian stocks outperformance over China. Buffett's Berkshire trims HP stake, exits, bet on General Motors. China's economic activity mixed as Beijing steps up support. Sun called in for South Korea as Asia's leading teams enter qualifying for the 2026 World Cup. Wanda pre-IPO backers reject initial offer for repayment delay. UBS is calling time on Indian stocks outperformance over China. Bloomberg. Chinese equities are expected to outperform Indian stocks in 2024, according to UBS. The bank said Chinese equities had priced in lots of negatives, suggesting a sharp rebound is likely once sentiment turns around. Meanwhile, Indian shares were already at fairly extreme levels based on earnings valuations, UBS added. The bank said additional stimulus measures from Beijing and improving geopolitical relations could provide a positive sustained market reaction for China. UBS stance contrasts with Wall Street's pessimism on China and rosy outlooks on India. Buffett's Berkshire trims HP stake, exits, bet on General Motors. Bloomberg. Berkshire Hathaway, the conglomerate led by Warren Buffett, reduced its stock portfolio in Q3 2023, selling stakes in General Motors and Activision Blizzard, among others. The value of its disclosed investments dropped 10% to $312.8 billion during the quarter. Berkshire has been selling equities throughout the year and has accumulated a record $157 billion in cash as a result. China's economic activity mixed as Beijing steps up support. Bloomberg. Chinese consumer spending in October exceeded expectations, with retail sales rising 7.6% from a year earlier, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Policymakers are currently considering additional stimulus measures to support the country's economic rebound. However, there are still signs of weakness, with growth in fixed asset investment slowing to 2.9% in the first 10 months of the year. A contraction in property investment also contributed to the poor figures. Economists have warned that consumer sentiment remains weak, and challenges from external uncertainties and insufficient domestic demand persist. Sun called in for South Korea as Asia's leading teams enter qualifying for the 2026 World Cup. Associated Press South Korea will begin their World Cup qualifying campaign in Asia with their opening game against Singapore. Head coach Jurgen Klinsmann intends to start the second stage of Asian competition with a statement win. South Korea will field their strongest team, including Tottenham star Sun Hyung Min and Wolves forward Hwang Hee Chan. Klinsmann wants his team to take the game seriously and be sharp from the first moment. The top two teams from each of the nine four-team groups will progress to the next stage of Asian qualifying, competing for one of the eight automatic spots at the World Cup. Wanda pre-IPO backers reject initial offer for repayment delay. Bloomberg. Investors in Dali and Wanda Group's mall unit have reportedly rejected the company's proposal to delay the repayment of 30 billion Chinese yuan, $4.1 billion, plus interest due by year-end. Wanda proposed repaying investors in Zhuhai Wanda Commercial Management Group via installments over four years while offering a more than 20% stake in the unit as collateral. Under terms of the original investment, Wanda had agreed to repay pre-initial public offering investors 30 billion Chinese yuan if Zhuhai Wanda failed to list shares by the end of 2023. The new proposal suggests the company sees little chance of an IPO anytime soon. DHL Express unveils 410 million US dollar expansion of Hong Kong hub. South China Morning Post. DHL Express has invested $409.7 million in expanding its hub in Hong Kong, adding to the $653 million it has already invested since 2004. The expansion will increase total warehouse space at the Central Asia hub to 49,500 square meters up from 31,400 square meters in 2019. The hub's peak handling capacity has increased by almost 70% to 125,000 shipments per hour, and it can handle six times more shipment volume than when it was first established in 2004.
The expansion comes ahead of the completion of Hong Kong Airport's three runway system next year. Chinese stock pickers play sector specific bets ahead of Xi Biden summit. South China Morning Post Chinese manufacturers in industries such as machinery, textiles, and electronics that have significant exposure to the U.S. market could benefit from the recent meeting between President Xi Jinping and his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden. The improvement in relations between the two countries has led to speculation that the Biden administration may review the hefty tariffs imposed on Chinese imports since the trade war began in 2018. Analysts have recommended domestic appliance maker Zhujiang K Vacuum Container, M-Logic, and lighting fixture manufacturer Guangzhou Haoyang Electronic as top picks ahead of the Xi Biden meeting. Hedge funds copy Citadel fee model in fight for top Asia traders. Bloomberg Hedge funds in Asia are adopting the expense pass-through fee model, which involves charging clients additional fees to cover costs such as employee compensation and life insurance. The model, which is already used by global hedge fund giants such as Citadel and Millennium Management, is aimed at attracting top talent. The new fee structure could result in higher fees for clients, despite many hedge funds in Asia posting weak returns. The traditional 2 and 20 fee structure, where hedge funds charge 2% of client assets and 20% of any profits, is being replaced by the expense pass-through model, which has been adopted by firms including Nine Masts Capital and Southern Ridges Capital. By passing on costs to clients, Asian hedge funds hope to compete with global firms that offer multi-million dollar signing bonuses. The expense pass-through model is seen as a stable source of revenue as traditional fees continue to decrease in volatile markets. Explainer, what is the UK's Rwanda migrant deportation plan? Reuters. The UK Supreme Court will rule on Wednesday on the legality of the British government's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda in an effort to deter migrants from making the dangerous journey across the channel in small boats. The plan, which was struck in April 2022, has faced legal challenges and is seen as a key priority for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Critics argue that the policy would put individuals at risk of persecution and could be in breach of the UK's Human Rights Act. China aims to put auditors in crosshairs as national security concerns rise. South China Morning Post China's finance ministry has proposed that auditors undergo additional cybersecurity reviews when their work involves national security. The draft rules apply specifically to auditors who have been hired by listed firms and non-listed state-owned financial institutions, as well as other state-owned companies. The proposal is part of Beijing's efforts to tighten its grip on data security and management across industries. Tencent, Alibaba earnings hold key to $44 billion China tech run. Bloomberg China's technology sector rally, which has increased aggregate market value by $44 billion, will be tested as Tencent Holdings and Alibaba report their third quarter results this week. Tencent is expected to show growth due to cost reductions and a more favorable regulatory climate. However, Alibaba will likely face a broader consumption slowdown and increased competition. China Xi begins first U.S. trip in six years. Bloomberg Chinese President Xi Jinping is set to arrive in San Francisco for a meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. The visit is aimed at boosting confidence in China's economy, which has been slowing down in recent years. However, the visit has also sparked protests from anti-communist party demonstrators who accuse China of human rights abuses in Xinjiang, Hong Kong, and Tibet. The visit is seen as a key test for Xi, as public sentiment towards the Communist Party has hardened in recent years amid criticism of Beijing's trade and human rights policies. Arrest and death of hockey player whose neck was cut with skate blade. South China Morning Post a man has been arrested on suspicion of manslaughter following the death of ice hockey player Adam Johnson. Johnson's neck was cut by a skate as he played for the Nottingham Panthers against the Sheffield Steelers in the Elite Ice Hockey League. The suspect, unnamed by South Yorkshire police, was taken into custody. Video footage of the incident shows Johnson skating towards the Steelers' net before being struck by the skate blade. Johnson later died in hospital. 
she's trips to Iowa, tractors and Star Trek wallpaper. BBC Chinese President Xi Jinping's ties to the U.S. state of Iowa were highlighted during his recent visit to the U.S. She first visited Iowa in 1985 as part of an agricultural delegation and returned in 2012 when he rode a John Deere tractor on a farm. Some of the Iowans he met on his first trip are now known as old friends, and some have been invited to a dinner with Xi during his current visit. The president is also expected to meet with former Iowa Governor Terry Branstad, who served as U.S. ambassador to China under Donald Trump. Xi Jinping in U.S. for first time in six years to meet with Biden and attend summit. The Guardian Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived in the United States on Tuesday for his first visit in six years. The visit comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken addressed the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, forum, stressing the need for freedom and the rule of law. The meeting between Xi and U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to reduce tensions between the two superpowers, with economic issues high on the agenda. Demonstrations are expected both for and against Xi's visit. That's all the news for today, folks. Let's wrap things up. First, UBS is predicting that Chinese equities will outperform Indian stocks in 2024. While Wall Street remains pessimistic on China, UBS believes that Chinese stocks have already priced in a lot of negatives and could rebound sharply with improving sentiment. On the other hand, Indian shares are already at extreme levels based on earnings valuations. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. In other news, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has been trimming its stock portfolio, selling stakes in General Motors and Activision Blizzard, among others. The value of its disclosed investments dropped 10% in Q3, leaving the company with a record $157 billion in cash. It seems like Buffett is preparing for something big. Meanwhile, Chinese economic activity remains mixed, with retail sales exceeding expectations but growth in fixed asset investment slowing down. Policymakers are considering additional stimulus measures to support the country's rebound, but challenges from external uncertainties and weak consumer sentiment persist. It's a tough balancing act for China. In sports news, South Korea is gearing up for the World Cup qualifying campaign in Asia, with star players like Sun Hyung Min and Hwang Hee Chan leading the charge. Head coach Jurgen Klinsmann wants his team to make a statement from the get go, and they'll be facing Singapore in their opening game. Let's hope they kick off with a win. Now, let's talk about Dolly and Wanda Group's mall unit. Investors have reportedly rejected the company's proposal to delay the repayment of a significant amount of money due by year-end. This suggests that Wanda sees little chance of an IPO anytime soon. Looks like they'll have to come up with a new plan. Moving on, DHL Express is expanding its hub in Hong Kong with a whopping $410 million investment. The expansion will increase warehouse space and handling capacity, allowing DHL to handle six times more shipment volume than when it was first established. With the completion of Hong Kong Airport's three-runway system next year, DHL is gearing up for even more growth. In the world of finance, hedge funds in Asia are adopting a new fee model to attract top talent. The expense pass-through fee model involves charging clients additional fees to cover costs like employee compensation and life insurance. This could result in higher fees for clients, but it's seen as a stable source of revenue in volatile markets. Let's hope the talent is worth the price tag. Now, let's take a look at some international news. The UK Supreme Court is set to rule on the legality of the British government's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda. The plan, aimed at deterring migrants from making dangerous journeys, has faced legal challenges and is seen as a key priority for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. We'll have to wait and see what the court decides. In China, the Finance Ministry is proposing additional cybersecurity reviews for auditors involved in work related to national security. This is part of Beijing's efforts to tighten data security across industries. It's clear that China is taking data security seriously. 
And finally, we have Chinese tech giants Tencent and Alibaba reporting their third quarter results this week. The rally in China's technology sector will be put to the test, with Tencent expected to show growth and Alibaba facing a broader consumption slowdown. It'll be interesting to see how these results impact the sector. That's all from me, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's news. Remember, you can always join the discussion and share your thoughts and questions. What are your views on UBS prediction of Chinese equities outperforming Indian stocks? What do you think about Warren Buffett's decision to trim his stock portfolio? Let's hear what you have to say. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.